Hello, and thank you for taking time out of your day to watch this presentation on the steps you can take to become an exemplary leader. Leadership is more than just giving orders to teammates and achieving a goal. It's about inspiring others and treating everyone as an important piece of the final result. In our presentation, we will talk about the tips and tricks you can take to develop your leadership skill set from good to great. My name is Tyler and I'm a fashion design student at Georgia Southern University. The Georgia Southern Leadership Program requires all participants to read the Student Leadership Challenge, written by James Coos and Barry Posner. One of the practices discussed in the book is for a leader to inspire a shared vision. Great leaders have a moral responsibility to look towards the future and imagine what it could be. Leaders breathe life into visions and communicate goals and aspirations so that others can understand and adopt those ideals as their own. Leaders who inspire a shared vision do two things. They envision the future and they make it their priority to enlist others. One way in which a leader can envision the future is to imagine the possibilities. This requires you to reflect on your past, attend to the present, prospect the future, and express your passion. Another way in which you can envision the future is to find a common purpose. People wanna hear more than just the leader's vision. Shared visions have the power to sustain commitment and keep people connected to the cause. Leaders also need to recognize the need to enlist others. This can be accomplished by appealing to common ideals and the animation of a vision. Continuously reinforcing motivation, performance, and people's importance in the world is an example on how leaders can appeal to the common need. It's similar to finding a common purpose, but a need is gonna give your team momentary pleasure. During this time, leaders can bring their ideals to life by using illustrative language, metaphors, and symbols to generate enthusiasm and excitement for the common vision. In the beginning of this project, our team was constantly coming up with ideas on how to complete this task at hand. We'd come together and figure out what we wanted our presentation to look like. We needed to look to the future of possibilities and appeal to our shared aspirations. If we had done anything differently, our project probably wouldn't have turned out the way we wanted it to. Another practice discussed in the book is how leaders can enable others to act. Leaders aren't leaders without partners to work with. They are in charge of creating trustworthy relationships by making others feel strong, capable, and confident when taking on responsibility. Fostering collaboration and strengthening others is how exemplary leaders enable others to act. Creating a climate of collaboration is done when leaders understand what a group needs, then builds the team around a common purpose. Engaging in creating a climate of trust and actively facilitating relationships is how one should go about fostering collaboration. Trust is the backbone to all teamwork. Without it, there can be no long-lasting connections within the group. Leaders need to take initiative to demonstrate trust and your group members will soon follow through. This shows that you are willing to understand everyone's needs. Facilitating relationships is also another important part in fostering collaboration because people need to recognize that they need one another to succeed. When putting a puzzle together, the whole picture isn't on one singular puzzle piece. Every piece needs to be used because they are all as equally as important to one another to create an image. Leaders need to also focus on strengthening others. When people feel confident about what they're talking about, they are obviously gonna put in more work and have a greater result than those that are weak and unsure of themselves. Leaders need to enhance self-determination within their group. Leaders need to have the mindset of not leaning over other members, but future leaders. Once accountability and responsibility is encouraged, actions towards the goal will follow. As well as building up self-determination, leaders need to develop confidence and competence. Personally, I believe people should have confidence before competence, but that's a discussion for a different day. <laughs> Throughout this project, our team has constantly shown attributes of how we enable others to act. Each one of us has taken on a responsibility of lifting up one another and helping out in whatever way we can for each other. Trust is a key part of our relationship and that has truly made a difference. Next, Timmy will discuss on how leaders can effectively use member strengths to build a productive team. Hi everyone, my name is Timiwehi Jagadu. I'm a mechanical engineering major, a sophomore mechanical engineering major. 
and I'll be talking on collaborative leadership. Throughout the semester of late 2000, the course late 2000, we learned about collaborative leadership that is leading in a group and working with teammates. This part of leadership is very important because we will see it everywhere we go and we are constantly working in groups and with other people and definitely when we graduate and get into the workforce we're going to be working with people and even leading people too yes so it's very important to know about collaborative leadership and even here in Georgia South and we're working groups in our different like different classes and um, organizations so yes the part of the it's very important and highly effective for a leader to be able to identify the strengths of each team member in his group or in his team. Its studies have been shown that the team is able to get more work done and they produce more effective and efficient work when the team lead or the leader of the group is able to identify the strengths of each team member in his team because they get more work done faster and more efficiently than let's say another team that's planning or that's chosen to um, improve um, the weakness of each team member i feel like it's really important for the leader to know the strength of each team member because it brings more underst understanding in the group excuse me understanding in the group and it enhances everyone's ability to get the work done faster it's very important to have a relationship with your team members instead of just um, going straight ahead to get the task done. When the leader is able to understand each person's, each team member's strength, that will help him in him or her in assigning work to them. For example, a certain team member could be able to, could have better communication skills Another one could work better under pressure. Another one could be able to come up with um, ideas faster than, let's say, the next person. And with that, the leader will be able to assign work to this teammate, to this member of the group. And you know, everyone can bring, like, pull their own strengths to make the group work more efficiently. and get the achieve the goal faster i just want to say that it's important in collaborative leadership that we've been learning throughout the semester when working in groups the leader or whoever is in charge of the team should be able to assess and know this the strengths of his teammates and that will be effective in the end Hi, I'm Morgan McCullough, and my major is Multimedia Film and Production. So, leaders use the forming, storming, norming, and performing method to create a successful team working together. They form thoughts about the group and the group members, starting from the first day they meet them, um, and they figure out each person's own unique style. So, they figure out who's more introverted and would be good behind the scenes versus people who are more extroverted and would be good for presentations or representing the team. And they also let the team members know what they personally expect from them. They also need to represent the morals and rules they put on the team. For example, if they preach about not going on your phone during meetings, but then during a meeting you see the team leader on their phone, that's just hypocrisy. And it'll make the uh, team members lose trust of them and not really respect it that much. In conclusion, I hope this helps strengthen the viewer's knowledge on team strengths, shared vision, and inspiring others to act. Thanks for watching.